All right, Daniel Ensign, thank you for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, I just had to cut you off from our conversation offline because you were giving some <laughs> some good stuff. So I wanted to make sure we we saved enough for for the listeners. Um, but yeah, a little bit of background about you and kind of how we know each other. Um, you know, you came up, you played baseball in Illinois from Barrington, Illinois, and uh, came back home and interned for Prep Baseball Report, obviously the company I work for. So that's kind of how we, we got connected. And you've continued to, or you've done some projects after your, your internship and um, did some stuff, you know, freelance stuff for us. So some really good work. Um, so thank you. And, and I know you're... Um, you got a lot going for you, so appreciate you taking carving out some time for me. Of um, course. I want to start with I think I'm gaining like a, a huge appreciation for the creative stuff now. Um, something that you're really talented in. And what's your favorite part with creating, whether it's videography, photography, maybe it's post production? Like, what is your favorite part of? that realm i definitely have to say it's like it's just the idea of like having a puzzle in front of you when i was like a kid i would always love like just creating like random things i remember i would like go gather all the books around my house and like throw them on like the 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 stairs in my house and i'd be like oh look dad i made a library and like you want to come visit my library or whatever and so i think i ever since i was a kid it was just like i loved the idea of like having these puzzles. So when somebody would come to me with a video idea or even myself, I would assemble it. It was just like having all these pieces all around me and crafting it into something bigger and like more meaningful. And so I think that's like the big, biggest thing for me. Another passion is baseball. Haven't played and, you know, went to Gordon college to play out on the East coast. And I'm interested because it's, I wouldn't say rare, but it's, you know, you have multiple passions. You had multiple things you were pursuing. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to ask which one you liked more because I don't think you can compare the two. I think they're pretty different. But what what was the difference? Like, what did baseball give you and what did creative give you um, that differed from each other but still meant still meant a lot to you? Totally. Um I think the great thing about baseball and really just like growing up in sports in general is it teaches you life lessons, like super important life lessons. And I want to say baseball in particular because you fail so much in baseball. Like you fail, like what is it? Like the guys that fail eight, no, six times out of 10 are Hall of Famers, right? Like you got a 400 batting average right there. And so, like, that's amazing. And I think I've definitely failed a lot more than I've succeeded in my life. And I think that's where baseball was super important for me. And then that's prob- that's where it, like, played the most importance in my life and definitely played a really good place. And I wouldn't be the person that I am today without having played baseball and all that kind of stuff. And so for creative... It's also like a similar thing because the way I taught myself, like I didn't really take a lot of classes um, specifically for photography or videography. Like a lot of it was just kind of on my own messing around. And the way it was to through trial and error, obviously that goes hand in hand with baseball. Like you fail, you realize what your mistakes were and you try and succeed and do better the next time. And so I'd say the two definitely overlap in the kind of lessons that it's taught me. But now being like kind of a full-time creative is it's not interesting to see the life lessons that I've learned and how to apply that to now my creative side. And I just had Grace Garrity on. Uh, you've met her uh, mm-hmm. at, at PBR. She went from, you know, northern suburbs of Chicago to... Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I want to know your transition from Barrington, suburb of Chicago, to the East Coast. Was, was that challenging at all? Was it something you wanted to do? Um, mm-hmm. Like how, how deeply did you want to do it? Um, 
and you know I, I don't think you'd take it back so what what did you kind of take from the decision to go and kind of say okay like when did you come to terms with okay like this is something like i really want to do i want to go across the country totally so it was not on my mind whatsoever when i was originally searching for schools i was like i kind of want to stay close to home um like maybe like a couple hours but nothing like too crazy and then as i kind of visited schools i was like eh, maybe like nothing nothing really fit what i was looking for because my main priorities for looking for a school was that it was small and that i had an opportunity to play baseball there and that wasn't there was some small schools in illinois and like in the midwest but there wasn't necessarily the greatest chance for me to play to be able to play baseball and so i randomly sent an email out to like a whole bunch of random schools that kind of fit that that were like division three in a small school and then i just well one of the coaches replied from gordon and was like hey like i saw your profile like the videos that i saw and why don't you come out for a visit and so I went out originally and I kind of looked around and I'm like, dang, like, I don't know. I had visited Wheaton College and I was just like, it feels just like Wheaton. And I'm like, not, not so much for me. Um, but then I ended up kind of getting to know the coach, getting to know some of the guys on the team. And that was like, that was really the selling point was that I felt that I was going to have a community right off the bat. And that I felt that I was going to be able to succeed at where I was and I was going to be able to have the opportunity to play baseball um, all four years. And so that was like, I think, the, the easiest way to transition. Um, and luckily I had a fantastic roommate who was like very much more outgoing than I was. So that helps make the transition. It was like, oh, I'd be sitting playing video games in my room and he'd be like outgoing, hanging out with people. I'd be like, oh, wait, like, I kind of want to go do that, too. Like, I don't know anybody yet. And so um, that definitely helped make it a lot easier. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't say there was, like, a big change. I think a lot of me when I was ready to graduate high school is I was just ready to be out somewhere separate from where I grew up. And that was, like, definitely the biggest thing for me. And I think the reason why I'm still out here on the East Coast is it's just completely new from what I know. I think so many people and maybe especially even more recently with um you know the COVID-19 and everything like so many people are just kind of indoors or don't want to leave or are comfortable just staying home which there is there's definitely a beauty to that you know mm -hmm. enjoying some time by yourself but you know for someone especially people who are starting college you're going into college what are some steps that people can take to kind of venture out more because like I said I had Grace on and one thing that she said was and kind of something you referred to is you felt like you had a community going in. Grace felt like that as well. Okay, I have a team, but for her it was kind of easy to fall back on and say, okay, like I don't really need anyone else. I already have my team. Or for someone who wants to get the most out of their college experience, do need to venture out a little bit. So what are some things you did to venture out and um kind of explore some other options totally um i definitely think my roommate was a big key um to that he he was from new jersey and um had a similar upbringing to me but obviously different completely different personality from what i had and so that was really helpful because i got to meet a whole bunch of new people and then honestly going off that is my school was there was a there was nobody that was a lot like me in terms of like where I was from, the things I was surrounded with going to public high school and now going to a private college is significantly different. Obviously like my college was half the size of my high school, which was like huge. Um, and so I think the biggest thing was just being able to meet so many different people and a lot of those people that I would say had the most influence on my life were not on the baseball team. So this is probably a little bit different than I think a lot most college athletes will experience. Um, but 
like I was not the closest with the guys on my team. Like they were my teammates and we got along great and we are, you know, great teammates on the field, but off the field, there wasn't too much of a relationship there. And they didn't really encourage me or play a part in helping me become a better person or a better individual. And I think that was being able to have friends and people that I knew off the field that were completely different from the guys on the team was huge for me. Um, I got involved creating a lot of videos and stuff for um, some clubs on campus, which were specifically like um, clubs for different ethnicities. And so that was like a really big thing for me is because those people obviously had completely different upbringings for me and I got to hear their stories and those kinds of things. And those all influenced me and, you know, the way I see the world around me, the way I interact with other people and just the way I communicate in general. And I think that was definitely the most important piece. What are some what are some of the coolest pieces that you've created especially in your your younger days maybe your college days where kind of shaped where you are today maybe creatively or maybe mentally where it's okay I I really like doing this I'm going to stick to this type mm-hmm. type of thing what what in your early days did you um you know, are you most proud of creatively uh, what kind of projects did you kind of lean on and say, okay, like, I really like this? Totally. Um, so I would definitely say some of like the first projects I made because I was just like, I was in high school, I was super passionate about it. And I would just like, I would daydream and even dream at night in general, just about like the videos that I could create and those kinds of things. And it would take me like months I would like prepare I would like have these ideas on my mind and then it would finally be the day that I could like go out and get it and so one of them was like one of my first drone videos because I that's how I started was with like just messing around with a drone and that was like the first real video I made there was like another one when I went to Hawaii in high school I had like a GoPro and made like a little travel video um and so I would definitely say that and then For college, I think the learning opportunities that I had with some of my coursework um, were like I took this class called video marketing. And so we were challenged to find a local business organization, something to go out and create a video for, um, for the project. And that was like super important because it was also like exactly what I wanted to do. Um, And that's also where I kind of discovered what I wanted to do. And so I was really proud of those projects just because like I put myself out there in a way that I probably wouldn't have if it wasn't creative. And so that definitely made it really fun. And I'd say most recently, I think the project that I'm most proud of is my recent senior film that I made, um, basically my like graduation project. And so I'd written a script for that, I want to say about a year before. I had no intention of it being an actual school project. Um, I knew it was like a passion project that I wanted to make, but it just so happened that luckily the thesis that I kind of had to follow was along the same guidelines. And so I was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. Like it's going to give me a deadline. So I'm going to have to do it by that deadline. Otherwise it's just like, it'll just sit there in the drafts forever. And so I think that project is definitely what I'm most proud of just because it took all the skills and then also all the life lessons that I've learned and just combined them together into this really vulnerable story that I wanted to tell. And it's even more important to me because I think it helped me get the job that I have now. There's a light on the other side. Yeah. That yeah, that I want to get into that because I've watched it and I think that like in that moment and I'd I'd watched it when you first came out with it about maybe ten months ago, something like that. Um mm-hmm. 
had watched it and then kind of stuck with me. And then once I had this idea for the podcast, for their story, I said, okay, if if I'm going to have, if I'm going to want to, I guess there's there's multiple reasons why I started this. And, and two to three reasons. I think number one is I felt like I had this vast network of people I knew playing sports, being in sports, working in sports, but I didn't really know who they were. So I can say if someone called me or texted me and said, hey, do you know Daniel Ensign? Well, yeah, I know him, but I don't really know him. Like, I don't. And I think that's one thing that I'm I'm finally, you know, through five, six episodes, these people I already knew, especially my sister, I I, I know her more than anyone else, but I didn't. There was questions that I've never asked her. There was things that I've never heard her say. And I think that's one of the, the cool things about doing this. And number two is everyone has their, their own story, right? Everyone has pulls life lessons from experiences, things they've been through. And as as unique as stories are, someone else is, is kind of going through the same thing, whether it's in life, whether it's in sports, whether it's in creative, whether it's professionally, relationships, anything. Like, as unique as stories are, they're also so replicable. They're also so relatable. And that's why I wanted to... There's I have many reasons why I wanted to talk to you, but another reason was because of that, that short film that I had seen. And and it was powerful. Um, it's something that I, I didn't know at the time when we had, uh, we'd met when you had interned for us and continued working for us for uh, doing some other projects. But and I'll link everyone to the film to your your website. Like I want everyone to check that stuff out because I think it's it's awesome. I think it's it was very well produced. But you know, you talked a lot about the the mental struggles you went through and um, stuff you had to overcome, and and maybe most importantly, stuff you came to terms with. What what was it about that or what kind of because there's some there's some vulnerability there, there's some openness there with creating something like that. What gave you and maybe the confidence isn't necessarily the right word, but what gave you the drive to put that out there into the open? Because I think that takes a lot. Yeah. Um I think it was um one i think the the biggest thing was that i was very comfortable with what i had gone through you know it's been when i created that it would have been about 4 years i think since the kind of time that i started to experience um depression symptoms and i think i was very comfortable and i was very open to be able to tell that thing, that story, because I was a lot of me. I think if you asked me a year or two into college, I probably wouldn't have wanted to share that because I was like, oh, I had all of these issues. I still kind of do. Like I would, I would have been kind of ashamed of them. And I think I was always afraid of people judging me like, oh, like you're depressed, you're not healthy, whatever it is. And so I think that when I, as I kind of went through college, I just was, just became very comfortable. I was like, this is who I am. You know, I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of the things that I've been through. And that I think was the biggest reason why I was just so comfortable and willing to be open. And I didn't really, in that film, I didn't hide and like hold anything back. Like everything that I experienced is completely out there it's from start to finish um and that was just like the biggest thing because I wanted that just to be very raw and very emotional and because that's just how life is in general you know like it's nothing nothing is filtered you know as much as the internet wants us to believe that or wants things to be filtered like they just life is raw and that's how it should be and that's the best way that we're going to learn from each other Recently, I've kind of gravitated towards that. I think I've I've connected a little bit more with kind of the open, the long form type of 
media podcasts and stuff and even like short films like that i i've been connecting with that a little bit more uh, i think people are going to probably learn something a little bit more about me uh, and and you obviously in this episode but yeah i mean i went through some some troubling times too recently and um you know i think it's tough for me because i'll never i think i think you'd you had said it when you you know someone had asked you four years ago you know what you were going through how you were feeling you, you wouldn't have been so open necessarily and i think now i'm almost in a, in a place or, or was in a place where i was i don't i think i have so much compassion and empathy for for let's say people who don't have food to eat every day or people who are i live in chicago right i see a lot of people who are homeless and i was always afraid to kind of say this is what i'm going through because then i can easily just look across the street at someone who is carrying their whole life on their backpack and but I think that's kind of the wrong way to go about it. I think everyone shouldn't be ashamed of kind of what they're going through. Everyone's stuff can be heavy in their own way. That doesn't mean that homelessness or poverty isn't a big deal. It's just everyone's kind of got their own things to go through. So I, um, you know, that's something that I, I kind of, you know, I kind of wrestled with like, okay, like I, I do have it better than a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I should downplay anything that I'm feeling or anything that I've experienced. So, yeah. um, no, I appreciate you kind of, you, you appreciate you saying that where, um, you said you've, you, you failed a lot in your life. Where, where do you think those failures have come from and how have you tried to kind of rectify those or turn those from failures to successes? Totally. Um, so there is, kind of two examples that I can maybe think of. And the first one, I think being when I experienced in high school, um, I was not, I was pretty quiet in high school. I was not somebody that was, you know, very outgoing. I was very, I think I had a lot of social anxiety and I wasn't, I always was afraid of being awkward. And I think that, kind of trickled into what I experienced my senior year and kind of the development of depression symptoms. And although some may not, you might not consider that as a failure, but it's like an issue that I experienced that I've now turned into a positive in terms of like, now we're, we're having this conversation about the things that I've experienced. And I've been able to have other conversations with people that you know, the things that I've experienced and it's been able to get me, allow me to know them a whole lot better, allow me to hear the issues that they've been having and just be able to connect over something like that. And so I think as much as the downs in our life are super disappointing and that they, they, you know, we may see them in a negative light five years from now, a year from now, whatever it may be, six months from now, you may see that as a completely different thing. You know, it could be very easily just like, holy cow, I experienced that and look where I am now. Like, look what what I was able to learn and teach myself from that and, you know, just be able to grow because that's ultimately what we're trying to do every day is just grow and become better versions of ourselves. And yeah, that's like the first example. And then the second one is kind of a, a more stupid one, but it has ultimately also gotten me to where I am today. But over quarantine and uh, the year of 2020, I got really into mountain biking. And I had previously had labrum surgery in May of that year from an injury that I had pitching in high school. And so I was kind of like recovering and I was like, what is a way that I can have fitness, but like also not be just in the gym all the time and so I started doing that and then I went on a little trip and I was very dumb but I was trying to learn how to jump on the bike and I got sent over the bars and my shoulder just slammed right into the ground and I separated my shoulder 
That's and tough. that obviously was so unfortunate because I was on the road to recovery after my previous surgery. And then it was just like, boom, another setback. So I basically had to completely, I didn't play baseball at all my junior year, but I also now looking back, I see that as like the, as annoying and as frustrating it was not being able to recover and play baseball that year. It was probably like the greatest, the best thing that could have ever happened to me because that year I was able to completely focus on like my studies and my creative side and I got an I had an internship that was in the spring where obviously baseball season would have been and I was able to completely focus on that learning absorbing all of this information and I mean if I wasn't hurt like I wouldn't have had that opportunity and I don't think I'd be what I'm doing today like I don't think I'd be doing video or photo full-time like I would be doing who knows what and so yeah, as much as that was like a failure and a stupid decision, it completely like is, I see it as a complete opposite now. I see it as like the best thing that probably could have ever happened. That's so well said that you just kind of flipped something that could have easily been a negative, easily could have put you down for a long time and you flipped that into the reason you're excelling today. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's that's well put. When did you, when did you realize? And you tell me, and you you make your boundaries. But when did you realize you had something to overcome, something to face? Kind of those maybe high school years. When did you come to terms with? Okay, this isn't. Maybe it's not a bad day. It's not a bad week. It's actually something a little bit bigger than that. I think that's something that some people struggle with is. Is maybe they don't maybe they don't know they don't know that what they have what they're feeling what they're going through is like I said more 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 heavy than or heavier than a bad day a bad week. Totally. Um. I think. Well, it 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 wasn't really a realization with me. It was my my parents and my family that were the ones to kind of say like, Hey, like something's really off here. Like you're, you've just kind of been hanging in your room, not really talking, not really engaging too much. And I think like there's something up, there's something going on here. And I think, you know, as kind of like the, the, the male stereotype is to just really like shove it down like completely like it's it'll go away like it's whatever I'll get over it like I don't want to have anybody else have to deal with my issues like I just want to like shove it down whatever and move on and I had always kind of done that like through my entire life and so I was trying to do it again now for this time that I was experiencing it and it just wasn't like not I wasn't getting anywhere. And so my family recommended that I go see a therapist and they were just like, just try it out. Like just go one time. If you don't like it, like you don't have to keep going. But I think I realized that talking to somebody and especially somebody that's like a third party that has no like has no bias whatsoever was super important and was really helpful because they were able to say like, oh, hey, like you know, that thing that you did or that thing you were experiencing, like either I felt it too, or maybe there's something else there um, that you need to explore. And I think that that was like the moment that I was like, oh, wow. Like maybe this is something like it's a little bit more than just a bad day or a bad week, as you said. Yeah. I've been going to therapy for going on three years now. And it's something that it's helped me something that I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't realize the impact it could have, um, but having someone that that just gets it, mm-hmm. that understands, that gives you like actionable, maybe feedback or data that you can you can use because as important as family members are, as important as friends are, and as needed as they are, family members like my mom has to be 
just my mom at a certain point. My sister has to be just my sister. Like, she can't... They don't have the tools necessarily to help me with a lot of the things I'm going through. And as much as they want to help, they they don't they don't have the tools, like I said. And Totally. You know, when I started therapy, it was like, okay, like this person, like I said, they get it. They have the tools. They... You know, this is what they're they're here to do. Like they're here to they're here to help. They're here to get it. They're here to understand, to listen, uh, to provide you with 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 feedback, like useful like feedback. So uh-huh. some that's something that I've I found extremely helpful. Where when did you kind of start to pull yourself out? And and I wanna be clear about this because it's something that I've also realized is and it might even be one of the best parts of it is the work. It's every day. Like, it's every single day. It's, you know, the plenty of books out there, plenty of things to listen to. You know, therapy is as often as you want to go. You know what I mean? So it's it's an every day. It's like a constant thing, and the work isn't work isn't done like it's not like you hit like you you hit like okay like you do this for two months two years you know whatever and and you're you're good like it's every day which is maybe even the cool part like the the self you know the work the development the growth like there's no there's no limit to it necessarily so I think that's totally. kind of the cool part to it but when did you start to kind of and what helped you pull yourself out of where you were. For example, one of the things, and I know you had mentioned it too, and there's a light on the other side, is being present. I know mm-hmm. that's one thing that I've tried to work on the most is being present. Another thing is just treating people like, and it's so crazy how it how it helps. Doing a lot of things externally help internally. Like one thing I'm really working on is not treating people like robots, like especially like my coworkers. Okay, like now every single time, and I shouldn't say every single time. I I I really try every single morning before I talk to before I talk to you know I talk to maybe a handful of people every single morning for work. Try to say good morning before I talk any any business work related type things because I think that's maybe something that that isn't isn't necessarily noticed in our day to day. Like we treat people who bag our groceries and cashiers and coworkers like, okay, like I open up my laptop, it's time for work. Well I can also squeeze in a good morning in there and Totally. I can't ask other people to do it for me, but I can I can do it for them. And yeah. so, you know, being present, treating people like they're actual people, um, you know, so kind of do those things are have have really helped me. What are what are some of the things that you concepts, things you worked on that that you you leaned on and you look back on and say, okay, like that that kind of pulled me out. Yeah, um, I would say that I think one, and this goes kind of hand in hand with being present, is just being willing to listen. Um, I think a lot of times we're very caught up in responding. And so we want to just like, as, as we're talking, you know, not, not necessarily as you and I are talking, but as like people are talking, a lot of times we're so keen to be like prepping and like, oh, they said that I got to respond to that instead of just like listening to the whole thing, sitting with it and then like being like, okay, this is how I should respond to that. And I think that's like, I I think so important because, you know, say you and I are beefing or whatever that day. Um, and you know, you've got issues with whatever I'm doing. And instead of being like, just so defensive and being like, you know, completely stonewalled and be like, not willing to kind of listen that's just not going to be a productive conversation. 
it's not going to, you're not going to understand me. I'm not going to understand you. And we're not going to be able to, you know, do what we need to do. And I think that is like a really important thing that I realized was instead of being so quick to respond and just make sure that I say what I need to say, it's just like listening to the other person, hearing them out, and then making sure that I respond that in a way that's just going to be calm, understanding, and, you know, productive for that, for that conversation. And yeah, I, I want to say that's like probably the biggest thing is making sure that you just hear whoever you're talking to out and internalizing that um, for yourself. Hey, hey. I think it's easy to kind of overlook some of the the internal you know, battles we're going through, especially in sports, because you know you committed, you know, in your senior year. Like people, I think, see, okay, well, he's got, you know, he's got somewhere to go at, you know, to play in college, mm-hmm. or you know, this kid's like a stud athlete. You know, like what can what can go wrong or what can be wrong? And right. What would you, what would you tell someone who's maybe kind of going through something you went through when you were in high school or towards your maybe late high school years, maybe early college? What, what would you tell someone who is kind of ha- having some some internal struggles, battles that they that they're facing? Um, you know, advice, tips. Like if you were to, you know, I hand you the phone and someone on the other line was was going through it what would you what would yeah. you tell him i mean i would tell him that there's light on the other side but in all seriousness um that i mean that that's all like that's complete truth that's why i named it that way was because i mean just like we kind of have talked about is that you know as much as it feels like you're just going through it like there's you're you're down on a hole 10 feet and you can't you, you can't see a way out like there's no way that you're like you're just like so lost you're just like you've basically given up it's just a realization that like you know at the end of this there is going to be something that you look back on and say like wow like i'm so glad and thankful that i did go through that and it's really hard to recognize that in the moment But I think it's just that mindset that is so crucial. We talked a lot about, or at least in my film and what you mentioned, was just like being in the present. And a lot of things that I, this kind of saying that I have is that the past is regret and the future is anxiety. And so if you're just so focused on those two things, it's going to be really hard to focus and deal with what you're experiencing right now. Um, and so the, yeah, the, that's just what I would say is that there is going to be a positive on the other end of this. I can't tell you what it is. You probably can't tell you to tell you, tell yourself what it is. Um, but just have confidence that there's going to be something better that comes from this. Have you read The Power of Now? I have not. No? Highly recommend it. No, you'll like it. For sure. Yeah. The Power of Now. I finished reading it maybe a couple weeks ago, and I think I'm going to go back to it just because I I liked it so much. So highly recommend. Um, Sweet. In terms of documenting, um, is that something you've done with since you're on the creative side? something you've doc you like do you think that the projects you've created kind of document your journey or have you not kind of i think there's a light on the other side i think does a obviously a great job of that but are there other things maybe things you haven't shared things you haven't pu- published that you know i'm currently doing you know 75 hard right the challenge the health mm-hmm. fitness reading kind of challenge and you know 75 days you know progress pictures and I'm on day 10, so I didn't really, I didn't realize it until I took my 10th picture, like, wow, I have 10 things here, like, 
I can look back on day one now and I have kind of this repertoire, this thing, like 10 things that I can like look back on and it's, it's what it is. It's a document. I'm documenting this journey. Do you think you've done that um, with things you have published, haven't published? And and if if so, like how important is that to kind of document, whether it's in creative, whether it's a journal, whether it's, you know, keeping a, a voice memos, like how have you done that and how important can that be? Yeah, um, I would say I haven't done necessarily that much documenting. Um, definitely more so now just because like I've become so much more into it, even if it's just like a simple picture, things like that. But in terms of like my struggles, I would say the the most, the thing I did the most was just writing. You know, I was going through it and I was just like up here. It just felt like so much was going on. Like I was just completely overwhelmed. And then I would go and I would just write every single thought down that I was having. And I would almost like it would almost be like a letter to. I don't know myself or just like the paper. I wasn't even focused on like how good I was writing. I was just it was just all going down onto the paper to help me make sense of like what was going on and looking back on those it's it's really really hard to read those to just be like wow like those were actual thoughts that I was having at that time but it was really helpful in that moment because to just leave it all up here is I would say is the most damaging that you can do now. I mean, some people have a therapist that they talk to, but a lot of the time I didn't have, like when I was going through it and what of whatever time it was at that day, I didn't have an immediate access to a therapist. So like, that was my way to basically just like tell somebody it was just writing it down, getting it all out there. So that way it didn't feel like there was just all this weight on me. Um, and so, yeah, that was like my main way of documenting and just m making sure that I wasn't just, there was something to look back on, right? Just as you said with those pictures, like there was something to look back on. There's all that kind of stuff out there. And yeah. Do you feel the most present when you're creating? hundred percent yeah because there's just there's no stress right like it's just like I'm out here having fun doing what I love and I mean there's the I will say there is times where it's stressful um depending on what I'm doing but especially when it comes down to just like doing things that I'm passionate about like it's just like uh, it's it's just about having fun and telling stories, and that's what I love to do. <laughs> I think I'm the the most present doing this when I'm actively listening and interviewing, and yeah, I think that's why I like like doing it so much. And of course, even like you said, it there's times where it is stressful, whether it's a whether it's a deadline, whether it's you know hefty project or editing. And I know for me, like I'm not as as talented or as savvy as you are with some of these things or programs or I don't have the hard drive space that you might have or the RAM that you might have. That's so I'm, like that, that part stress, like stresses me out, but I realize it's a, it's a stress worth having because it's something I like doing. So it's, it's weird to even categorize it as stress. I'm sure it's hard for you to categorize that as stressy because it's a, it's a different type of, of stress. You know what I yeah. mean? It's not, it's in, and it's still at the, at the bottom line it's kind of enjoyable in, in a sure. way um not to uh not to cut you off but i just want to capitalize on that is um you know as you talked about like you may not have all of the things and whatever but and it's it's occasionally sometimes really hard to say like oh i don't have this i don't have that therefore it can't be like this um and i mean that's just kind of exactly what I went through when I was starting out learning to create was I didn't have the best camera. I didn't have the best gear, but I like made do with what I have. There's like a saying 
in the like creative industry, like the best, the best camera you have is the one you have with you. And that's just like, can be so applicable to so many things, you know, but then also realizing that like, if there's something you truly enjoy, like invest in yourself and make sure that you're giving yourself the time to be able to enjoy those things, obviously within reason. Um, you know, if you really love cars, you're not necessarily going to go out and buy yourself a Lamborghini if you're, you know, don't have the money for it. But I think there's a lot of value in that because a lot of these experiences only come around once. And, you know, if, if it means that you're going to experience something great, then I'd say go for it and invest in yourself to be able to experience that because it's it just makes things so much more fun especially if you love doing it that's well said man that is that's well said want to end on that but i do also want to ask you what's what's next for you what are you what are you working on what are you doing and what's is there anything you see yourself doing in the future that that you can leak to because i know you're a thinker like you if there's one thing it's you're thinking so what what can you share? Yeah. Um, I mean, right now, um, it's a lot of, a lot of work. Um, but it's a lot of really fun work. Um, the goal with the company right now is to be able to start telling some more stories. And so being able to, like we're going to, the plan is to do at least one short film this year. Um, and then, kind of go from there but yeah I think it's just more about storytelling and things like that and I want to be able to kind of like I did with my senior film just put some of my stuff out there more and encourage people and those kinds of things because that's just what I love doing and I think that's ultimately the some of the best best things you can do is just doing what you love um let's see um yeah i think i think that's it i i mean i i i like the idea of being able to like overlap some of my loves and some of my interests so like i love mountain biking now and i love camera work and I want to be able to kind of integrate those a little bit more. So I think that's like that, that, yeah, that kind of stuff is super fun. Like if you have two different hobbies or two different interests, finding a way you can like overlap them a little bit, I think is like a cool way to challenge yourself. So that's one of my goals. Can't wait to see what you, you produce, what you create. I'm going to link everyone to your website. I want everyone to, to take a look at everything you've you've done and you will do in the future so thank you for taking the time thank you for for this conversation um like i said in the towards the beginning like i feel like i know people but but i really when i thought about my network i was like okay maybe i don't really know these people as well as i do so thank you for for allowing me and and a lot of people hopefully to to learn more about you and get to know you a little bit better and uh Hope to stay connected. I mean, I've I've asked you already some questions about some creative stuff like L U like L U T S and lots yeah. and whatever. So, um, you know, you might be hearing from me more often about some of these things. So sorry in advance. <laughs> no worries. I'm happy to help. <laughs>